people save all of their money to come here once in their life. People love this place and I do too. while you work do, 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 do. put on that grin and start right in to whistle loud and long never in my life would i think that these simple disney sing-along vhs tapes would change my life but they did and today i'm excited to share with you my thoughts about each park what rides i liked the most which food i enjoyed eating but first we need to start at the beginning Welcome to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, the largest tourist destination in the world, and I'm lucky enough to call this my home. But that's not even the craziest part about my life. I was able to travel to every single Disney park in the world in one year, and it changed my life for the better, but also the worse. I gotta tell you about it. Welcome to Liberty Square, the place that started it all. And I'm not talking about America, I'm talking about my career. As a kid, I was able to go to Disney World a lot with my parents, but unfortunately, as I became a young adult, I didn't have adult money to pay to come to the park. And I ended up becoming a custodial here, cleaning up the trash. I was living in the most magical place in the world, meeting some awesome people who loved what I loved, AKA Disney. Nothing could go wrong. Fun fact, I actually used to work here too. Can you catch my drift, you know? I used to hang out with Aladdin a lot. Unfortunately, then the pandemic happened and everyone's lives, including mine, changed forever. And I lost my job and I didn't know what I was gonna do next. Once the pandemic was over, I actually got my job back with Disney, but unfortunately I didn't take it. Why? Because I was doing this, YouTube, social media, full time. It was great. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. But basically, when the pandemic was over and the park reopened, there was a lot more content creators in the park, which is great. I think everyone should follow their dreams. If you're watching this video right now and you wanna make content, do it, I implore you. But the issue for me is I was challenged to be more creative. In 2023, in the beginning of the year, I hit a wall. I didn't feel motivated to make content in the parks because at the time I felt like I did everything. No, you don't understand. I was freaking out. I left my job at the most magical place in the world, Walt Disney World, and I was running out of ideas. Just as I was about to give up and start crying, I opened up Instagram to see my friend Patrick in Tokyo Disneyland. I didn't even know that place was open. I wanted to go so badly, but it seemed like such a far out dream going to Tokyo Disneyland. But just because I was bored, I checked how to get there. And it was actually really easy. And honestly, <laughs> hi little cute kid. I'm gonna go into the details of how expensive it is later in this video. But point is, is that you didn't need a travel visa. You just literally had to buy a ticket. Not too many people can stop what they're doing and come to Tokyo, Japan with me. But I did know one person who's crazy just like me. And his name's Jeet. I traveled the world this year. You could say like I saw a whole new world, you know? Of possibilities, I hope. Yeah. On a yeah. magic carpet too? No, see that's the issue. It's very expensive. So next time I travel the world, can I borrow your magic carpet? Is that okay? Yeah, we'll make sure that he gets his tassels rotated. That Perfect. way he's ready for the trip. Perfect. Happy yeah. birthday. It would have been nice to have a magic carpet for sure. Our first Disney International theme park was Tokyo Disneyland. Now this was my first trip. It was kind of a big trip. By the way, we did do more in Tokyo, Japan, but if I included everything into this video, it would be like an extra two hours. So go watch the full version of all of my journeys on my main channel after you watch this. With all that out of the way, we finally made it to Tokyo Disneyland. The entrance was so sick. I was so excited, I forgot I was in the foreign country. I just felt like I was going into a new Disneyland park. It was awesome. I mean, look, Minnie was in the front. Right away, I noticed similarities to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Super nice cast members, Mickey Mouse and construction. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How do you feel? Yo, these are so comfy. You gotta try it on. <laughs> we were already having a blast. <laughs> it's only been 10 minutes. Spoiler alert. International theme parks just have better merchandise. I didn't make the rules. Welcome to the World Bazaar. Very different than our regular Main Street that we started this video on. It's absolutely beautiful because if it rains, you can stay dry. <laughs> they have a lot of similar shops like Casey's Corner, 
But something that I don't know if you guys noticed right away, their castle's also very similar. <laughs> then we saw Tigger and it made my day. I used to hang out with him. There was no social distancing rules either, which was really cool. However, everyone respected Tigger's space, which is something that you see a lot of in Tokyo Disneyland. Important information, Tokyo Disneyland isn't owned by Disney. Tokyo just pays the licensing requirements. That's why you have a castle exactly like Orlando, Florida's because Tokyo wants to replicate our experience in Japan. Technically, their castle's better though. I know it's not the OG, but they have Cinderella Fairy Tale Hall, a walkthrough attraction. Needless to say, it was beautiful inside. They had stained glass windows where you could actually peer out and see Fantasyland. It was so cool. And they had a whole walkthrough attraction which told Cinderella's story. And at the end, you were met with this beautiful ballroom. Tons of picture opportunities, including this awesome throne that if you sat on it, it would glow up sometimes. It was pretty magical. <laughs> This is so good. <laughs> so good. Apple caramel churro. I got two. We got those churros from LeFou's in the awesomely themed Beauty and the Beast town. I loved the design, the attention to detail, and most importantly, they had a Gaston's Tavern, which actually served alcohol. <laughs> You need to understand that this was a huge deal for me, but it didn't stop there. Next up, it was time to watch a parade. And right when we got there, we got yelled at because we were standing, which was so weird. It turns out that Japan's culture of reverence, AKA respecting other people, influenced the Disney park. If you wanna get a close view of the parade, you actually have to sit. Now, don't get me wrong, there's standing areas in the back, but I didn't wanna stand. I had a perfect view of the Now This Continued Dream Up parade and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey! <laughs> Magic carpet! Oh my god! Not gonna lie, um, that was the first time I was watching that clip since I went and I just started crying. Um, it just made me realize how awesome of a journey this has been and we, we're just getting started. Oh man, okay, I composed myself. Last time I say this, I promise. Guys, if you want to see my full Tokyo vlog or any of my trips during this video, please go watch the full vlog after. This video will not do my journey justice. But one thing I had to point out was the Enchanted Tiki Room. It's freaking taken over by Stitch and I, he's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> One of the coolest things about Tokyo Disneyland is everyone gets into it. They love their choreography when it comes to parades and dances. This is before a parade. People were practicing getting ready and G and I were so overwhelmed. But seeing how much they are into it, we had to get into it and learn this amazing dance for Valentine's Day. By the time Mickey and Minnie got out there, we were ready to do the dance and everyone was so hyped. The award for best vending machine goes to Tokyo Disneyland. Like look at these well-themed vending machines in the wall. They had hot drinks, cold drinks, honestly, whatever you needed. It was awesome. The next thing that blew my mind is that Tokyo Disneyland still has a Splash Mountain. I thought they were closing it down like Disneyland and Walt Disney World in America, but it was just under refurbishment. It would have been really cool to ride it only because at this point, Disney World and Disneyland Splash Mountain were either closing or already closed. And there's a whole land dedicated to this ride, much bigger than any other I've seen before. But they were using it wisely still. They had little character meet and greets. There's Dale. <laughs> also, that's Gabby, our lovely friend. She joins us for a bunch of our international travel trips. We took a little break in Toontown because it was freezing and we were hungry. The food itself was delicious. They gave us a little wrap of egg in it. It was warm, it was gooey, it was everything I needed on a cold day. After our break, it was time for my favorite ride in Tokyo Disneyland, the enchanted tale of beauty and the beast. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this. This looks stunning. Are you joking? So much better than ours in Magic Kingdom. Wow. Oh my God, this is the actual like bridge. This is so cool. I want to live in a castle. <laughs> you want to live in a castle? I like to live in a castle. Yeah, I agree. Maybe not this one though. <laughs> 
This is a trackless ride telling the story of Beauty and the Beast on a whole nother level. Between the music, the set pieces, you're going 360 in different showrooms and you truly feel like you're in the story. I had the biggest grin on my face the whole time. I wanted to sing along to every song, but then there was this moment and I lost it. No! I just peaked. My life's not gonna get better than that. But the fun didn't stop there. There were so many good rides at Tokyo Disneyland, including this Baymax ride. It's the same exact ride as Alien Swirling Saucers in Disney's Hollywood Studios here at Orlando, Florida. However, everyone was dancing. They had choreography to each song. People went crazy. Look at them. I was so jealous. We still need something like this in the States. Every international Disney park has a small world and this one was adorable, or should I say kawaii. Personally for me, my favorite small worlds are the ones that include characters. Like you got Anna, Elsa, and Olaf ice skating right here. I've truly started to enjoy small world because each one is unique and different in their own way. I mean, we got Prince Charming right here with Cinderella, Peter Pan and Wendy in the distance, and let's not even get started about the three caballeros, bro. All of the small worlds are better than Orlando. And I'll tell you that off the jump. My biggest criticism of Tokyo Disneyland day one is the fact that their fireworks show is really lackluster. I remember filming this expecting to see so much more, but the fireworks literally only came from this area that you're seeing on the screen right now. It was a letdown for sure, because we had such a fun day with so much great entertainment and rides and ending it with this, I didn't know if Nighttime entertainment was good in Tokyo, but oh boy. Introducing Tokyo Disney Sea. I was wrong. Welcome to the main entrance of Tokyo Disney Sea, the Mediterranean Harbor, which opens up to six more nautically themed ports American Waterfront, Lost River Delta, Port Discovery, Mermaid Lagoon, Arabian Coast, my favorite, and Mysterious Island. An eighth port called Fantasy Springs is currently under construction and will be expected to open June 6, 2024. So make sure you subscribe because I'm definitely going. The technology of the rides at Tokyo Disney Sea are unparalleled. What you're seeing right here is 20,000 leagues under the sea. And fortunately for all of you watching, G and I did an all rides video in this park. A ride that really surprised me was Soren. I mean, do you see this? It looked like an actual palace. The wait time was long, 200 plus minutes. Fortunately, we got the fast pass. It costs money, but it's definitely more convenient than Disney Genie Plus. I felt like I was transported into a beautiful museum talking about all sorts of transportation that people used around the world. I wasn't excited about this ride. I've already been on Soren, but after seeing art come to life on the wall during the pre-show, you could color me curious. The ride ended up being exactly the same until the end when we got to fly through Tokyo and Tokyo Disney Sea. Spoiler alert, all of the soarings around the world are exactly the same, except sometimes their last end scene, which is still really cool. I enjoyed it, and something I realized after going to all the theme parks is that they don't make these parks for people like us who are traveling who want to see something different. Disney is just trying to create Disney in other parts of the world for their people, which makes sense. They want to bring the culture of Disney across the world to foreign countries so that we can all be unified by one thing.
buying cute Mickey ears. Oh, I forgot to mention, food, absolutely delicious everywhere we went. I don't know what they put in this sports drink, but Gatorade will be sweating if this ever comes to America because it was absolutely delicious. You guys have to try this. It gets the best drink award. Oh yeah, uh, one detail I overlooked, I actually lost all of my first day footage of Tokyo Disney Sea when I was traveling to Osaka on a bullet train. Yeah, it was traumatic. I cried. I literally don't like talking about it. Let's continue. Something else I definitely had to point out when we were doing all of the rides, Toy Story Mania is here, but the entrance is a little different. You literally have to walk into Woody's mouth. I questioned my life for a second here. I was like, do I really want to be eaten by a toy? Of course I do. The ride was the same, but it was nice to warm up a little bit. If you're ever traveling to Tokyo in January, February, just be prepared. It gets cold. We were wearing masks just to stay warm at this point. Holy moly. I can't wait to come back here when it's warm. I probably cared least for Cape Cod, AKA Duffy's hometown. He actually has an origin. Unlike America, Duffy and friends are super popular here. They recently just introduced a new character, Lena Bell. You're gonna see a lot more about her in China. They love her there. I don't know if it's sad or funny that Duffy is very popular in China and Japan, but he was technically born in America and next to no one really cares about him here. <laughs> My favorite area had to be the Aladdin themed pavilion. I mean, look at this. You you literally feel like you're in the movie right now. They even had a magic carpet ride, but it wasn't Aladdin's, it was Jasmine's magic carpet ride. I really wanted to tell my friends at home about this one. The most unique ride in Tokyo Disney Sea is the freaking volcano you see when you walk in. It's journey to the center of the earth. This is truly a perfect example of Disney Imagineering at its best. Between the queue, the ride vehicle, the immersion, you really feel like you're in the center of the earth. Whoa, look at all these weird things. The only thing I will say about this ride, it was a little bit short, but still definitely worth it. I really want to talk about every single ride in Tokyo Disney Sea, but for the sake of time, let's focus on one more. The Tower of Terror. This Tower of Terror did a great job at storytelling. It really made me scared getting on this ride with its pre-show, and it opened up a whole new world to me, talking about the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, which is like lore that spans all of the parks. It's really cool. Tokyo Disney Sea is vast with so much to explore and food to try. It was all amazing, but we got to talk about four more parks. So it's time to wrap it up and talk about the most important thing, Believe Sea of Dreams. They're nighttime spectacular, which completely blows anything else I've seen out of the water and really makes up for that lackluster fireworks show at Tokyo Disneyland. <laughs> Everything hit me at once when I was watching this show. I realized I was in Tokyo Disney Sea. I realized that I missed performing with Aladdin and Jasmine. I felt like that little kid again watching the Disney sing-along shows. It was an emotional whirlwind of amazing feelings and I was so content. This show was absolutely amazing. Imagine Fantasmic here in Disney World or over in Disneyland on steroids. I definitely 110% recommend you watch the show. Honestly, if you don't see the show at least once during your trip to Tokyo, you're doing it wrong, people. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, so Tokyo Disneyland. Overall, it was absolutely amazing. I still can't believe we went here in the beginning of the year. It seems like a dream looking back on it. I can't wait to return to this park. I also kind of want to work there now as an entertainment cast member. Last, last thing, don't sleep on the Pooh Bear ride there. It's literally a trackless ride, kind of like the new Zootopia ride slash Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Wearaway. Freaking awesome. I can't believe I almost skipped this ride. Anyway, we got to keep moving. I, I, there's too much to talk about. Next park. <laughs> Yeah, so we definitely made a couple of detours on our way to Disneyland Paris, including freaking Mykonos. But we ended up, finally, at Disneyland Paris. 
One big difference right away, you actually have to walk through the Disneyland Paris Hotel to get into the park, which was unfortunately under refurbishment. But we were here for Disneyland's 30th anniversary, which was really fun. We saw a lot of different celebrations in the parks around the world this year, but by far my favorite was Disneyland Paris' 30th anniversary. Mickey, you look good. You're looking good today. <laughs> I love you too. You have a good day. We got the Main Street Transportation Co. right there. Storybook store over there, City Hall right there. For Disneyland Paris, we decided to switch things up a little bit. Instead of taking our time and getting a lay of the land, we decided to go head first into riding every ride at the park. This castle also had a walkway attraction with stained glass. It was fun. I saw the bane of my existence, the sword and the stone from the back of the castle outside. Yeah, I haven't mentioned the sword and the stone that much just because I literally tried pulling the sword at every single park and it never worked out. I'm, I'm still mad about it, but Fantasyland looks cool. We went straight for Pirates of the Caribbean because in Tokyo, the ride was actually down for refurbishment. So going on it here was fun. It was definitely different, but not my favorite Pirates ride. I definitely recommend taking your time when you first come to an international theme park because we got lost very quickly. They have a magic lamp here and you can meet Genie. That's so awesome. But to my delight, they had a whole nother themed area to Aladdin. I don't know why we don't got this in America. America. Well, we technically have Morocco and Epcot, but this was about Aladdin. They even had a little museum telling his whole story. It was definitely very cute. I appreciated it a lot. This is not a hot take. Disneyland Paris definitely has the best frontier land, starting with Big Thunder Mountain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god! Ah! Ah! What we didn't realize is that this ride is actually on an island. So you have to go underground. And when you're going underground, it is dark, it is fast. It completely cut us off guard. You're basically on Tom Sawyer's Island if you want to compare it to Orlando, Florida. It is shockingly so good. Definitely the best Big Thunder Mountain in the world. Next up is Euro Disney's take on the Haunted Mansion, AKA the Phantom Manor. At first glance, it just looks like another Haunted Mansion, even the stretch room is about the same until you get to the actual ride. You know something's different when you're greeted with this really creepy bride just staring at the window right away. Don't get me wrong, there's elements that we know even like the dining room party, but then there's this really eerie figure staring at you. Do you see him? Oh, you see the ghost in the mirror? Yo! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! That is freaky. And the changes don't stop there because instead of being greeted by a bunch of happy Hans ready to party, we seem to be going deeper, lower into the crevices of the filth and the dead bodies, bro. People are coming out of caskets. It gets dark. And this is why I think this is the best attraction of its type because you're actually brought into a whole zombie western land. So not only is it more spooky and these ghosts are like pulling off their heads and everything, but it makes sense to the land you're in, frontier land. We got ghosts dancing and drinking at the saloon. It's my type of party, honestly, but at the end you're met by this creepy skeleton ghost and he seems overjoyed that you're here. So I have a feeling you lose. I don't think you come back from this. You, you're literally dead. Anyways, we were bouncing around a lot that day, so it's time to check out Walt Disney Studios. It's their uncomplete second park, but coming in, it's a pretty awesome look. It's a mix of old and new Hollywood studios from Orlando, and I love it. Unfortunately, out of all of the parks that I visited this year, this is the weakest because it's not done yet. There's major expansions coming into this park, but as of right now, when you walk in, you can truly feel how small it is. They do have an Avengers campus, which I absolutely love, but if you compare it to Disneyland California Adventures, Avengers campus, it's so much smaller. Hopefully with their expansion coming in the next year or two, they'll be able to add more to this area. But overall, if you're just from Europe and you come here, it's pretty awesome. Their main ride in this area is Avengers Flight Force, which is an overlay of rockin' roller coaster. It stars Iron Man and Captain Marvel. It was fun. Me and Jeet didn't agree on this. I just thought it was nothing special. Jeet absolutely went crazy over it. It's literally just pitch black 
with a couple of screens of Iron Man and Captain Marvel shooting stuff I didn't know. You know, I feel like their Marvel ride could have been better in my opinion. One thing that every Disney park gets right is their Tower of Terrors. What a fun ride. This ride was really cool because it was themed like Hollywood Studios Tower of Terror, but the actual ride vehicle felt more like Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout over in California Adventure. Congratulations, Disneyland Paris. You win the most creative award when it comes to dealing with annoying kids. Introducing the scream monitor. I'm not gonna scream just because I'm an adult. Ah! Like, it, it's kind of therapeutic. You, you kind of enjoy it. Ah! <laughs> exactly. Ah! It lets kids scream their hearts out. Up until this point, I only knew about Toy Story Land and Disney's Hollywood Studios, but we had Toy Story Playland here. And coming here was cool at first, but then I realized that they literally copy and pasted this land in every other international theme park other than Tokyo, so I got bored of it pretty quickly. <laughs> My favorite rides were found in Toon Studio though, the area where they just shove a bunch of IP in one spot, including Aladdin. Majority Pixar though. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze here. Oh, whoa. whoa. Flying around back here. Keep your hands in the whoa, vehicles at all time. Whoa. 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 Oh my gosh. No. It kind of looks scary. <laughs> Hands down, my favorite ride in the studios park was Crush's Coaster. You're literally spinning 360 at some point as you see we're going backwards into darkness. It kind of reminded me of Gardens of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Speaking about roller coasters, Hyperspace Mountain in the other park is insane. Unfortunately, this meant that the Star Wars theme was on right now. I really wanted to see what the original theme was like. So one thing I heard is that French people don't like Americans. When I was in the park, all the cast members were super nice to me, except for one, who told me I couldn't hold my camera in my lap or anything during Space Mountain, which is insane because the ride goes upside down. My camera would have literally flown away. So to be clear, she wanted me to just place it on the ground and not do anything with it. That was insane. <laughs> Side note, the steampunk aesthetic that they have going on in Tomorrowland was so cool. It's definitely my second favorite Tomorrowland in the whole world. In Tomorrowland, they had a little cute even Wally statue. They had these characters kind of sprinkled around the park. The Orbitron was cool, again, with just this awesome aesthetic. It was a little cramped for G and I, but we got it done. We went on the ride. A whole new world! <laughs> a new fantastic point of view! No, no one to tell us! No, except my battery died. Where to go? Back in the other park, like I said, do not do an all rides video first day, it's chaotic. We got to go on Ratatouille for Jeet's first time in Paris. The ride is exactly the same. It's a carbon copy, except the one thing. At the end of the original ride here in Paris, you're actually led out into a restaurant, which makes sense, because I always thought the end queue of Ratatouille in Epcot was so cool with nothing to show for it. But I found out that the end queue is actually themed like the restaurant. We didn't eat much the first day except for this corn dog, but it was good. As I mentioned earlier, there is an Aladdin's Magic Carpet ride, but it's themed around the park, Walt Disney Studios. Genie's basically the producer and he's filming us make the Aladdin movie. A whole new world! A new fantastic point of view! Uh, I think Genie likes that. He, uh, you think he's gonna hire us back, Genie? What do you think, Genie? Day two was a lot more chill. We started looking at merchandise, but other than the 30th anniversary merchandise, we weren't that impressed. Disneyland Paris definitely had the weakest merchandise out of all the international theme parks. Their main street's pretty normal other than this awesome side street that they have that goes all the way down and it's completely enclosed. It connected to all the stores, so it definitely made traveling through Main Street, especially when it was busy, a lot easier. Main Street had their own version of the ice cream parlor and Casey's Corner, but what was different that I absolutely loved is that they were selling champagne on Main Street. You could get a nice glass and walk around with it. Speaking about drinks, the first and only restaurant we really checked out was the Silver Spur Steakhouse in Frontierland. It had American food. It wasn't the best, but it also wasn't the worst. I was just happy we could walk in and make a reservation on the spot. The dining room itself was very pretty. My least favorite food item was the onion rings, and my favorite was the chips and guac. Today was about exploration. You can see the full vlog on my YouTube channel, but I did find the cowboy 
cookout and they serve the beer so I took full advantage of that. One thing to note is that you can find a lot more rare characters in international theme parks like Jafar. Gene and I really struggled with trying to find good Disneyland Paris merchandise. Anything we did find you could probably get anywhere. Now something unique to Disneyland Paris was the entertainment. They were absolutely killing it. These dancers are very special. They stick out from any other entertainment I've seen when it comes to non-face characters. They really bring it and you can tell that everyone who comes to Disneyland Paris loves the dancers. I absolutely loved their main parade. It was very different and Aladdin even recognized me and said hi. It was good to see him. Look at Mickey just cycling along. The Lion King group was awesome, which by the way, they do have a Lion King show and unfortunately I wasn't able to see it, but I heard it's really good. So you guys definitely should check it out. But look at their costumes. Seeing a young Simba was so cute and Rafiki vibing at the top. I was so impressed with the dancers during this whole parade. I mean, the Finding Nemo float was awesome as well. A giant crush, I was like, yo, it's sick. The only thing I didn't like about the parade, which is a nitpick, is that they did have Maleficent Dragon and, you know, we have that in Walt Disney World. Their minions were a little bit different and said stilts they had like big arms so they would swing. I kind of like that change in detail. My favorite part was at the end, saving the best for last, the princesses. It was a really special moment because it was the end of the parade so all of the princesses were allowed to actually come to the back of the float and hang out together and wave goodbye. It was fun seeing them all together like this. They have all these different areas to explore. They had an Alice in Wonderland maze that led directly to the Queen of Hearts castle. I didn't even know I could ever do that. It was a cool surprise. I did get lost in the castle a little bit. Getting to the top of that castle really made the maze worth it. I mean, the view was beautiful. And because Big Thunder Mountain took over Tom Sawyer's Island, we had Adventure Isle instead. Exploring got crazy. We found this vast cave system, which was a little creepy at first, but then found some stairs that led us to our new friends from the Pixar movie, up but most importantly we climbed a little bit more and found this really scary bridge at first then we got confident and started running all over it and it was fun i honestly felt like a kid in a disney sing-along show we really built up an appetite after exploring so much so we found the akuna matata restaurant themed around the lion king and it reminded me so much of the animal kingdom lodge in walt disney world i got a plant-based item it was chilly not that bad at all and of course we had to go on the best big thunder mountain in the world one more time at nighttime the lighting in here was going crazy speaking about lights the fireworks show was absolutely amazing. The projection mapping on the castle was mind blowing. My camera does not do it justice. And there was drones behind the castle emulating the twinkle of stars. My gosh, the 30th anniversary show was stunning and it only gets better. Wow, did you see that? I forgot how awesome it was until I just rewatched it while making this video. And the best part is the drones actually created Mickey ears that also look like 30 because they rotate. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is what dreams are made of. This is Disneyland Paris. Their entertainment was so much better than Tokyo's when it comes to the castle show at nighttime. This is what I was hoping for. Not to mention they had those amazing fountains. Look at this. This is freaking iconic. Oh gosh, you guys have to watch the whole video if you get the chance because it's stunning. <laughs> I decided to cram one more day in at Walt Disney Studios because I didn't really get a chance to just vibe. I gotta give credit where it's due. Big magic carpet. Absolutely love it in the eating area when you're first walking in. My biggest complaint when it comes to Disneyland Paris is the fact that there was no kind of scaffolding or forced perspective image at the end of this alleyway because looking forward, that's where all the new stuff is gonna be put. 
but right now when I walked in, all I saw was construction vehicles and dirt mounds, which really ruined the immersion that Disney tries so hard to uphold. Something I noticed while walking into the Toon Studio area for the second time is that Peter Pan, Wendy, and Tinkerbell were flying around the little Fantasia hats, and there were a bunch of iconic gold character statues at the perimeter, which was really cute and reminded me of Disney's 50th anniversary celebration. I did find the thing that makes this park worth it, Mickey and the Magician. This show was phenomenal. It's a really cute show where Mickey is an apprentice to an actual magician, and once the magician leaves his lair for the night, Mickey gets into a bunch of magical shenanigans with Disney friends from around the universe. Just like that, I was little Jojo again, amazed with what I just watched. It all hit me so quick, I started crying again, and I realized I was in Disneyland Paris. And then things got even better because I saw Loki trying to pull the hammer from the stone, you know, a switch up from the sword in the stone, and it felt good seeing Loki struggle as well. Oh, and I did make a single reservation for the Ratatouille restaurant. I really wanted to try that. It was good. One of the appetizers I had tasted really strange, but the steak was super yummy. If you want to come here, make sure you make reservations prior. I only got in because I said I was a cast member back in the day and I was by myself. Hee <laughs> hee. Overall, Disneyland Paris was awesome. Walt Disney Studios left me wanting a little bit more, which is great because a lot more is coming. The actual Disneyland Paris park felt the most complete out of any place I visited in the world. Nothing new was coming. It just was done and I like that. Next up, we're coming back home to the OG park, Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Disneyland is my second home, so when I come to this park, it's more relaxed. It doesn't feel like an international park. It honestly feels like I'm in Walt Disney World, just on the opposite side of the country. But this time was different because we were doing every single ride in both parks, Disneyland and California Adventure, in one day and that would require a VIP tour guide, AKA Disneyland gets the most expensive day of the whole year for me. I am immediately putting this on, because I am. A VIP. <laughs> <laughs> so question, do you think we're gonna get all the rides done today? Oh. I, I'm confident. Let's see. I think we can do it. I think we can do I it. Like it. I like it. I like it. the I confidence. Can, <laughs> can you imagine if she was just like, no. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, like, no, no, no we're done. We were so happy at the beginning of the day. We got the challenge done, but it was a grueling time, and I don't recommend anybody doing that. In total, it cost over $5,000 to do this. You can go on a Disney cruise line with that money, or you can go back to Tokyo. <laughs> but this is the last ride of the night. It's 11.55. Another cool perk about VIP tour is that we got VIP seating for the parade and the fireworks show, which was very, very nice because we had seats. 
I wish we had that in the international parks. It would have been cool. Anyway, that's Disneyland. More on the vlogs. Let's get back to international parks. Welcome to Hong Kong Disneyland. This place is absolutely stunning. My vlogs, which I recently just posted, by the way, don't do this place justice. The mountains behind the castle, insane. We planned our trip around the new frozen land that just opened up. It was such a delight to celebrate a summer snow day. Compared to say the Aladdin land in Tokyo, Disney Sea, this is much smaller, but they pack a lot into a tiny area. Lots of detail, lots of nods to the movies, lots of color. At this point, you know the drill. G and I did all the rides in Hong Kong Disneyland in one day, starting with the new Wandering Oaken's roller coaster. It was fun. Good morning, Hong Kong! Oh, oh my gosh. I love you so much. Oh! There's no one here. The gates are open! I was even welcomed into Arendelle by the queen herself, Elsa. I felt pretty cool. <laughs> See what I did there? The characters roam, which is cool. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Happy okay. summer snow day. Olaf tasked me with getting 100 high fives before noon. Wow, well, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely get it I'm done. On the way. I'm curious how the park is now because in the first couple days, this place was mobbed with people. Characters would get swarmed by adoring fans. But anyway, let's focus on a big surprise other than that. Frozen ever after the ride. Honestly, at first, I wasn't really excited to go on this ride because we have it here in Epcot, but man, they took it and they made it that much better here. With bigger showrooms and improved animatronics, I hope everyone that has been on this ride in Epcot gets the opportunity to come to Hong Kong and ride it for themselves because there is a noticeable difference. By the way, the merchandise was so precious. Look how cute Olaf is. They went hard on the merchandising. They got Olaf ice cream. G and I legitimately spent a whole day just in the frozen land to make an in-depth video. It was so much fun. Then we came back the next day to do all the rides. In my opinion, the best Jungle Cruise is definitely in Hong Kong Disneyland. I mean, this guy literally blew up the water. The timing on that was insane, but even more insane was this ending. It was a like fire pit of death and it was in a different language so we had no idea what was happening but it was so much fun speaking about language i don't know if you noticed but all these international parks have had all of their signs and rides in english which is a little strange as far as a language barrier goes hong kong had one but it wasn't the worst also we ran into our lovely friend once again gabby Unfortunately, they didn't have any parades for the holidays, but instead they had street performers, which was cool. I still would have preferred a parade, but I mean, this view is stunning. Something I was surprised to see is that they had a Starbucks with an American menu. They literally just took the food and brought it over to Hong Kong. And something I wasn't surprised about, but still really fun to see, Mickey Mouse. Everyone loves him, no matter where you are in the world, he's just a cool guy. It was a fun day, and honestly, because it was smaller, doing all the rides wasn't that hard at all. And with the extra time, we were actually able to sit down and enjoy the show, Mickey and the wondrous book which y'all definitely need to see this hands down was my favorite show i saw internationally Happily Ever After in that show at the end was so nice because that's the song that I used to listen to every day when I worked as a custodial in Magic Kingdom, picking up trash, you know? So it was a full circle moment. And of course, yes, I cried once again. The rest of the day was fun. We just went on different rides and explored the park. I will say entertainment was a lot more excited to talk to us. They literally would stop what they're doing and just talk to Gabby or Jean or me. It was fun, I felt really awesome. Hong Kong Disneyland's best ride is definitely Mystic Manor. This ride showcases a wonderful collaboration of Disney Imagineering at their best while using some of the newest technology at their disposal. Basically this music box brings all of these old antiques alive in this mansion and it gets crazy. Definitely the most disappointing land goes to Toy Story Land just because it's copy and paste in three different parks with some variations of course, but at the 
end of the day, the best Toy Story Land is actually in Orlando, Florida. However, comma, one of the best views I've seen in all of the Disney parks was on the Toy Story Green Army Men's Ride, looking out at the mountains and the castle. Another thing that wasn't my favorite, but probably for the best, they didn't have any alcohol. They served alcohol-free beer. They also had these really unique snacks. They were like popsicles, but yogurt-based. This guy was based around Stitch, and Gabby was struggling with it. Big Grizzly Mountain is a ride you cannot miss because it gives you that vibe of Big Thunder Mountain, but it's a completely new and different ride. It definitely is the wildest ride in Hong Kong, though, for sure. Because you go backwards, and I had no idea that happened. It was definitely the biggest surprise of the day. It was awesome. I'm glad no one spoiled this for me. The biggest cultural shock when it comes to Disney parks is that in Hong Kong and Shanghai Disneyland, people don't really record videos or make as many TikToks, but they do love their pictures. So many photo shoots are happening all the time. Fortunately, we came to Hong Kong Disneyland during the holidays, which means we got holiday entertainment, including this amazing stage show, live singers, a bunch of energy, a bunch of characters. It literally was the best stage show I've seen this whole year, regardless of the holidays or not. I'm so happy we were able to see this. Unfortunately, they did have a Christmas nighttime drone show, which was canceled the night I was there. It was okay though, because freaking Main Street was beautiful with the snow. I can't lie though, these international theme parks and their freaking nighttime spectacular shows are insane. Hong Kong's did not disappoint with their huge fountain shooting as high as the castle. My mind couldn't process what I was seeing and they did a really fun job of including different characters from all over the Disney IP. Oh, I, I just, I get emotional just watching it right now again. Oh my goodness, I can't keep doing this. You guys don't get to watch all of it like I've been for the last five hours editing this video. We only ended up going to Hong Kong Disneyland for two days. You literally only need two days, but because I'm a content creator, I feel like I could have easily done one more. I cannot wait to go back. I want to go back. Hong Kong Disneyland might be the smallest park but it definitely gave me the most magical immersive experience out of anything in this whole world, just because we were surrounded by real mountains. And when you leave the park, you really can't see it from anywhere. So I really felt like we walked into a magic kingdom. Well, if you're still watching this video, thank you. With all that being said, it's time to wrap up my journey, the final frontier, Shanghai Disneyland. All I can say is wow. Shanghai Disneyland is a first of its kind. Opened in summer of 2016, it covers 963 acres or 11 times the size of the original Disneyland, which opened up in 1955. We have come so far to this exact moment. Right away, Chinese culture is already affecting this park. While Main Street USA resembles a turn of the 20th century American town, that wouldn't really work here. So instead we have Mickey Avenue, which is a tribute to classic Disney characters and cartoons. Another thing off the bat that we noticed is that there is a very big language barrier here. No one really knows English. We were trying to figure out what this big crowd was doing here, but then we put our heads together and realized big crowd, Main Street, it has to be a parade, which it was. It was their winter cavalcade and another big difference, Duffy and friends were actually starting the parade and everyone was so hype. I don't know any of these characters, but everyone else did. Their term of cavalcade definitely was used loosely here because this was a full on parade with a bunch of characters. I mean, the incredible family was skiing. How much better can it get? <laughs> you know how hard that is? <laughs> This might be the top moment of my whole Disney trip, which was Belle getting surprised by me and my friends. 
we're good friends of her and she did not know we were visiting her on this day so her reaction that smile it's truly genuine shanghai and hong kong disneyland's merchandise is top tier every time i walked into a store i wanted to buy something there was a lot of cool stuff going on in shanghai disneyland and unfortunately if i talked about all of it we'd be here for another hour so if you haven't already go watch my shanghai vlogs after this but one thing that did catch me off guard is this pirates of the caribbean stunt show they're literally in wind tunnels with choreographed fighting it blew my mind away and i've seen no footage about this in the past my goal for day one was to go on pirates of the caribbean and unfortunately it was closed we found the most american meal corn on the cob and a beer it was delicious we were starving because we got in midday our plan was just to explore the park but i could not keep my eyes off this castle and let me tell you this is 100 percent my favorite disney parks castle in the whole world i mean look how vast it is when you walk in i truly felt like i was in a real castle especially with all the princesses on the wall it was beautiful we spent 10 minutes in there just looking around the food was delicious between flatbreads hot chocolate and really cute treats i wanted to eat everything welcome to tron dude this is pretty sick a really special moment for me personally was actually when jeet was able to go on tron because he unfortunately has not had the opportunity to go on it here in america at magic kingdom so watching him go through the stages of looking at the ride, seeing the coaster, and actually getting excited to be on it. It was special, and it's something that you really can't recreate, and I'll always be grateful for being able to experience that with him. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to share with you that in the whole world, all of the Disney parks, my favorite fireworks show is here at Shanghai Disneyland. Not only do they have these awesome pillars that copy the same color scheme as the castle, which really adds to the immersiveness of the show, but there was one moment in particular that really caught me off guard. And you know what? Let me just show it to you. Enjoy. What? Oh, it's Is this? Oh, yeah. It's Doctor Strange. It's Marvel. I've never seen Marvel fireworks. I think. Right? Am I going crazy? Obviously, day one was a success. We checked into the Toy Story Land Hotel, which, by the way, we did stay at a bunch of different Disney hotels during our world tour. I just didn't have enough time to talk about this it. This place in particular was great, though, because it had American plugs and we needed it because we had to <laughs> charge day two and three of our trip we ate a bunch of food saw bell perform and did all the rides shanghai 100 has the coolest tomorrowland it just feels modern it doesn't feel like a weird retro future it just feels like i could actually see this tomorrow if you come all the way out to shanghai and don't go on this ride i'm sorry pirates of the caribbean is the best ride here it is a staple it is so different from anything else i've ever been on it does a great job of mixing screens and actual animatronics with great storytelling to create this seamless ride where you truly feel like you're in the middle of a pirates movie i was so happy that we we're able to go on this not once but twice it is the best ride and that's the only ride i'm going to talk about in this video because there's a lot of other good rides but this one is just Far and away the best. Okay, I lied. Pooh's honey pot spin was really cute too. <laughs> Also, another reason why I like the castle is it has a walking attraction inside where you can go all the way to the tippy top and you can ride a boat that brings you through a bunch of awesome character stories, but then into a secret cavern under the castle. And I mean, that's just sick. Dang it. 
I mentioned two more rides. Okay, now I'm done. I promise. I thought it was cool that Shanghai actually has like picnic areas where you can escape the theme parks and just relax. I wasn't expecting this, but my least favorite parade was here at Shanghai Disneyland. Don't get me wrong. They had some really cool floats, especially the Mulan one. But the overall theme was just kind of strange. It was based around Casey Jr., which is like a big train. And the finale was kind of dull. It was Duffy and friends. But everyone else loved it. They went crazy. With both Hong Kong and Shanghai, I honestly didn't like their food, but that's just because I'm not too big into Chinese however their treats were delicious here's a Mickey bar with chocolate and vanilla in it absolutely revolutionary America we need this right now all of the parks in the world had a main street except for Shanghai Disneyland this place blew my expectations out of the water everyone said this was the biggest magic kingdom it's not a magic kingdom it's its own park with its own culture and I cannot wait to come back to see its new land Zootopia whoa 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 Listen, that's a great story and all, even though it's my second time hearing it, because I was, you know, there the entire time. <laughs> it's Gene, everybody. Hi. But uh, you haven't answered the most important question yet. Which is what? What was your favorite part? Well, okay, slow down. We're going to do a rapid fire thing right now where I answer all of those questions. Starting with, what was the best piece of merchandise I got in the whole world? You know this answer? You should. No, what was it? You're wearing it. It was the fluffy hoodies in the hat. Come on, let's These are go. Nice. These are Wait, nice. This is iconic. Anytime I wear this on my Instagram, social media, YouTube, people are like, where'd you get that from? I want some. Can you buy me some? And I always say no. Unlike America, we notice that the crowds aren't that bad during the weekday, but on the weekend, they can get pretty rough no matter what park you're at. Most expensive park that I experienced was Disneyland Paris, and it just boils down to the currency. Outside of America, our dollar is stronger than most Asian countries, so Hong Kong, Tokyo, China. As far as ticket prices, Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, they were all around $55 to $70, depending on how early you bought your tickets. The most expensive part about these trips was the flight. They ranged from $1,800 to $3,500. $3,500 being the Delta first class, but right behind that, around $3,100 was my China trip, and my cheapest was uh, Paris. The cheapest hotels I found on property were at Hong Kong and Shanghai. They were around $200 a night. And then when I was with Jeet splitting that in half for like a hundred dollars, not bad at all. The shortest wait times had to be at Shanghai Disneyland during the weekday. We went there one day and then Tokyo Disneyland definitely has the longest waits. Make sure you get Google Translate. It's going to save you a lot of time. But overall, all the cast members are extremely accommodating. And the hardest time you're going to have is going to Shanghai Disneyland. But even then, you will be okay. It's really awesome because Disney has done a great job at bringing their parks internationally. There was points when I was in Tokyo or Hong Kong and I forgot that I was in an international Disney park. It's so integrated. It's almost creepy, but I love it. You will be fine. You won't feel like a fish out of water. Well, as I arrive back to Magic Kingdom with all of my luggage after traveling the world, what's next for me? The worst part about traveling around the world is for a little bit, I actually got very sad. I had this journey, I had this goal, and it was something that I could always chase after. No matter how bad my day was, I knew I was gonna go to China, I knew I was gonna go to Paris. But then once I finally accomplished that goal, what was left? And I kind of went into a little bit of a depression, I guess, a couple of weeks, you know, I just sat in my room recovering and I was like, really sad, because this journey was over. But on the other hand, it was such a gratifying and awesome experience. Well, not only did I get to see all these other Disney parks, but I got to meet so many new people, experience so many new cultures, eat food that I loved and also hated. Now when I come to Magic Kingdom, now when I travel anywhere else in the world, I just have a whole different appreciation for life in general, you know? It never stops, it keeps moving, even if you're uh, on a different time zone. So in a weird way, it did ruin my life for a little bit because I literally thought I did everything other than maybe having a kid, but we're not doing that anytime soon. Whew, I'm not even getting married anytime soon. Not only was I filming this for myself and my first time, there's a lot of people watching at home who have never seen China, who have never seen Tokyo and probably never will. I mean, my mom can't really travel that far. So it was a pleasure and an honor to be able to record my experiences for you guys. As we usher in 2024, I definitely plan on going back to the international theme parks. I mean, Disney's always changing. I mean, this area I'm in right now, Tiana's Foods, it's a new ride coming to 
Disney World. There's a whole new land coming to Tokyo. There's a whole new like area coming to freaking Disneyland Paris. So even though <laughs> I thought I was done traveling, we're just getting started, baby. Well, we've traveled around the whole world in one year, and I know all of you have one more question for me, and that's which is my favorite park? Not to let you guys down, but it's Walt Disney World, Orlando, Florida, my home. After going to all the other parks, I've noticed one thing. They all try to replicate the vibe that you get from this park. They want the Disney Springs, they want the community, they want the massive crowds, they want to make money. And the fact that I have this in my backyard, I will never, ever, ever take that for granted. But if I had to pick an international park that I like the best that I definitely recommend you guys go to if you can only go to one in your lifetime, it's definitely 100% Tokyo Disneyland. Tokyo Disney Sea is just so different and unique as you saw. And I promise you it's not because they have the same castle as Magic Kingdom. Or maybe it is. Huh. Never really thought about that. Before I end this video, I just think about the little Jojo who loved the Disney sing-along and I can't help but think about how proud he'd be, you know, for me accomplishing this. I didn't realize I would ever have such an opportunity to do this and I really have you guys to thank. So uh, thank you so much for a wonderful 2023. I'm so excited for 2024 and actually my New Year's resolution is to be grateful for everything. My friends, my family, you guys, it, it's truly insane. I <laughs> I can't even think that the first time I went to Disney as a little kid would turn into this amazing experience. And I'm really excited for what's next. <laughs> Remember guys, every day is a blessed day to be alive. Thank you so much and uh, Happy New Year. I'll, I'll see you in 2024. <laughs> see you next year. Bye.